This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the awesome cast. Time to get geeky, get techy. With us here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Ready to talk tech with you guys, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area. And we like to get together with people around this this the area that, that, that work around this stuff and uh, and have some fun. Uh, so with me in studio, it's Studio A week this week for John Chichelli. He's a gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire at Chilla on the Twitters. He matches the couch. Uh, I, I gotta I gotta like I need like the Pantone color of this so then I can put in a request for like the perfect color match. There you go. You want to borrow a pillow? I mean, there's too many of them. I mean. Like, I think we have a couple in storage can or they, something. Can they do that with clothing? Like they can with paint? Have I, you ever done that with paint? No. Yeah. Have you seen my house? Does it look like I do much home improvement? No, but it, I don't know. Maybe you had to paint something small and you're like, okay. I need this exact color. So like you can take, you can tell I have a kid. You can take like Thomas the Tank Engine, like your train from your kid, and you can go into like Home Depot or Lowe's and say, I want this blue yeah. in a paint. And they like it. Do something magical with it and scan it, and then you get that exact color. I wonder if you can do that with clothes. There's your million dollar idea. We're going on Shark Tank. I'm not even. Not, oh, come on, <laughs> like pigments and thread counts. I'm not even getting started with this. <laughs> you know, we don't even do mattress commercials on this podcast like everybody else. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> this is your awesome cast. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast dot com dot com. Guys, we have the dot com now. And dot com? Like, seriously, go to awesomecast.com and it's awesomecast.com slash. And like, we moved it. We moved it. It's great. We're, we have liberated awesomecast from the throes of GoDaddy hosting. Uh, we had a big outage last night. It was the last straw for me. So we're we're on the move. Uh, moved that in my blog and rest of the rest of the sites will be coming soon. But anyways. You, you moved the domain. I moved it. Well, no. I, so we had the domain. I moved it. But the hosting was on GoDaddy. The, and. And the new domain, because uh, Rob De La Creta, original Awesome Caster, had it. And it was like, yeah, you want it? And it was like, yeah, we should probably take care of this. And so I transferred it. <clears throat> I'm on Hover now for all new domains. Ah. Finally did the Hover jump. Um, that sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. Sorry. The, <laughs> the Hover jump. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so we put that on it. Another really important domain for one of our projects that people enjoy uh, once a year. Um, and, uh, so, so that stuff is, is moving forward and we're on that. So I'm hoping, um, we, uh, I guess shouts to surpass hosting that was recommended ages ago. Uh, it's, uh, it's been really nice to us, uh, the, the sites that we've had on it. So we're going to move more of our important sites that are still on WordPress over to it. Um, this is, this should have been gold. Uh, <laughs> so, but a little geeky stuff there. Um, so, so there's that. And, um, so awesomecast.com, still live.awesomecast.net will work. Um, I don't think I've set up live.awesomecast.com yet. So uh, either way, you can go to the site. There's a link uh, for live, I believe, at the top of the site uh, for you to join us. Or just follow the facebook.com slash awesomecast. Like the page. You'll get a notification when we go live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And you can join us in the chat room like Brandon and, and Wheels are right now and uh, and become part of the conversation with us. Um, and, and Missy, uh, uh, um, awesome Missy. I was saying, I was thinking mayhem Missy. I was like, we need a Missy name. So <laughs> you are awesome, producer Missy. I, I'm awesome and I'm also mayhem because I still do the show couple of hours from now well there you go uh she'll be in there chatting with you making sure i notice what's going on and we get in becomes part of the conversation uh check us out on the itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio video versions like i said on the facebook and the youtube page uh any way you would like to digest this awesomeness and also check out our side podcast awesome chat and uh coming soon like i said we're working on some uh, video game kind of content too uh so keep an eye out for that and i swear one day i'll get the awesome tips damn it so one day one day this will happen and the, also <clears throat> what's that 
I was going to say the day that that iOS 11 launches and changes true. everything, I probably we'll get, get the it, 10 tips get out. Get it up there. Uh, thank you to our friends, uh, our streaming partners. Uh, we, of course, uh, show up on riversedgepgh.com as well as the 405media.com. Uh, those guys have been putting us on every day at noon, like for, uh, noon Eastern. Uh, I believe that's 9 a.m. Pacific time. So if you uh, missed, the ma- missed it or just kind of want to put it on, re-listen, whatever the case may be, check out the 405media.com. Uh, and thank you them for supporting us for this show as well as the wrestling mayhem show and thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast you can support the show uh and whoa that got weird uh apparently my layers got weird and there's a little chill in our background but anyways hello <laughs> but uh support the show there thanks to our friends mike fedor mike fedor show on the twitter at the uh, fan of the show one dollar level and at the five dollar um what do we call it on this show <laughs> the five dollar coffee club is matt weller matt one t underscore weller on the twitter um at the five dollar level level you get state of the show you get um some gold content like we're talking about fcc regulations if you're interested in that and and why that's a problem for testing microphones at uh chilla's big bank international uh so thank you to our friends that have been uh uh, supporting the show in that manner um for a good while now and uh with that let's get into the awesome thing of the week and and chilla i'm glad i beat you to putting this in the rundown um so this was this was a lot of different places i think brandon uh out there on the on the uh facebook group for awesome cast which is another place you can join um did share a version of this uh uh, so so it was it was on every outlet like i got emails from all the places that i check out on a regular basis iron man homemade iron man suit requires a special kind of crazy is the engadget title um and i watched uh both of the videos that that have been included with this so this guy had this kind of rocket kind of thing and you can go through and and see kind of his testing and he's basically trying to do the float thing at least uh for the iron man kind of idea that backpack is full of basically jet fuel um it's great i mean it's not as exciting as you know Tony Stark being slammed against the side of his workshop and being put out by his robot. But still, it's it's kind of interesting to see the progress. He did have him on like his legs for a little bit. And, and, and you know, it, and finally, he I think he did land on the he has, he has at one time six turbines. He's doing calisthenics and everything because, you know, just the body control in order to control where you're going with this thing and kind of learning how to do it. You see him doing the flagpole uh, move and the moves and things like that. Uh, and eventually he starts, he can hover, he can hover about what is that a foot off of the air there? I mean, mm-hmm. a couple of feet there and, and at least move in that, in that case. And he, he added a, um, a heads up display, gla- smart glasses to and roll. Of course, Red Bull, has a video with this as well um but no he has a heads up display so he knows how much fuel he has left uh because before he would just have people that were observing and helping go check his bag to see how full it was because <laughs> it was one of those kind of bladder uh backpack kind of things so but it, you know the video in the interview with uh red bull goes into like you know why the the you know, the working out works out for, you know, like fits into this and everything. Um, and how it was like a perfect kind of mix of that and the technology. So a really cool kind of, you know, again, you know, we talked with Kenny about like the whole Star Trek thing, right? Of like, we get to see it on TV mm-hmm. and maybe maybe more so with the movie. It's inspired people to say, I-, I want to be the Iron Man suit. And this isn't the first example you've seen of it either. So <clears throat> I like how they're in, in some of the recording. There's a person on one of the hoverboards kind of around yeah, the back like of him. recording him <laughs> recording like, him like he rolls back around him mm. and it's just like and i'm like i'm like are they like a segway park or something <laughs> i realize it's one of the segway hoverboard things that, that, mm-hmm. that have come out but uh no i thought it was really cool it, definitely go check out the videos we have the links up there in the in the group um they're around look up the uh, uh you know iron man iron man um uh, red bull videos and uh it, it's pretty cool and it only costs fifty thousand dollars to build only 50 actually it's not bad i i I, I consider that not very bad for that either so um he's british so that that adds to that special kind of crazy i guess so it's really cool it's really cool um check out the video for sure i mean we can only describe so much of what's happening here but it looks great looks like he has flamethrowers in the picture uh so 
Awesome stuff. Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So, so we briefly touched on Samsung's upcoming announcements. Um, on, we're, we're a day early before the Samsung announcements last week that came out on Wednesday. Um, two of the things that caught my interest. One, um, big fan of the first version of the Gear 360. They've come out with a new version of the Gear 360. I'm interested to see what it looks like um, up close and personal. I wasn't, so I like the tripod look. Mm-hmm. The other thing I will say about the tripod is I like the fact with the existing one that the tripod can unscrew and you can take the ball and just mount it to anything. Yeah. This is kind of like a... It's built in. Well, it's... it's, the, it's um, they shrunk the, they shrunk the size of the headpiece okay. drastically. Okay. And, and with doing that, they moved the battery into the base. Um which I think gave them some additional space for components <clears throat> from a video perspective, because now they're pushing 4K video uh, at 24 frames per second. Um, they did they did have to cut some of the, um, from a megapixel, overall megapixel per perspective, I think it went from like 20 or so down to 15 megapixel for stills, which I'm not 100% sure why. The... Still um, SD card, still connects directly to the phone. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the interesting things is it'll do now do a live stream. And they said in testing with with connected up to a phone and doing a live stream, it was only about a nine second lag, which some people were complaining about. But I thought that was pretty good to take and crunch. It's a, a 4K video it, yeah, down. Re- and- yeah, it says 4K <laughs> video. And remember... That resolution is ju- not just what's in front of you. Everything you don't see is being generated as well. So you are basically have this giant video and you're windowing in in that little bit. You know mm-hmm. That's why something like a Ricoh Theta is not terribly impressive because that big bit is 1080 and you're zoomed in on a quarter of that. Mm-hmm. So it's basically a standard definition video that you get to see if you're in a headset, or which is great for seeing it on... Facebook. Mm-hmm. It, it's perfect on a phone for the most part. Even even if I was watching something live and wanted to click and drag, I wouldn't mind that for like crowd reaction mm-hmm. or for for I don't know if it was in the center of a ring at a wrestling match or something right. like that. It it would it wouldn't be that bad um, to kind of click and drag that around. The question which, I which which we've done we actually <clears throat> recently if you go to where do we have this posted? I believe if you go to the um, indie wrestling us Facebook page or the Renegade Wrestling Alliance one, it's actually shared between the two of them. Um, there is we once again we did this last year uh, back in August for a cage show they did, but we hung the Rico from the cage and you got them. We didn't know they were going to start fighting on the outside right in front of the, the <laughs> camera, so that kind of scared us a bit. I'm like yelling at the camera guy because he walked away from it. I'm like, go get it! <laughs> I'm like, please save my save my camera. But uh, but no, it's it's great for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, definitely. The one the one thing I'm interested in seeing it from an up close and personal perspective is. I don't know if I like the shape of the base um, and the way the tripod pod mount is on the bottom of the base. I'd rather have that wider tripod that came with it versus kind of this is just a widened area. Mm-hmm. It looks like they do have something you can kind of stick on the bottom to give it some some extra width and to keep it from falling over. That's one thing that worried me. Uh, the other interesting thing that it's going to be compatible with... Um, any Samsung phone running Android 5 or greater, and any iOS 10 or greater. Really? So they are saying, they've already stated, you know, some of the features will be limited. Um, Their editing application is only available for Windows. But you're saying there's a chance. Yes. So I don't know. I'm guessing, like, Maybe the photo and video and the mm-hmm. upload, but maybe not the live stream piece. I, I love the Rico Theta, but it's great to see that there's an option. Mm-hmm. So, and and I think we saw that you know the Samsung maybe had a little bit better video quality, but again, like and you saying it's like PC only still. Um, I I could not get that thing to work on a Mac to edit it, mm-hmm. and I, I edited a file cut. Of course, I could. You know, now we have Premiere, and I can I can load it up on on a PC of need, but I don't like to. Um, but still. Um, that's awesome. That's it, it's great. This choice, like these are the only two choices I I'm aware of of that like four hundred dollar level. And I'm guessing this will come in cheaper than that. Really? Yeah. Because the gear, Amazon.com. I think the gear three sixty was like down two hundred, two fifty. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. 
And I'm sure, I mean, I, but I again, know, but again, super limited. So, if you have so a phone. it's down to two Oh three ninety five direct from Samsung right now, if you had nice, um, but, <clears throat> and it was, it, it originally started at three fifty. Um, I even saw uh, Verizon as of recent, if you bought any Samsung device, they were giving away the gear 360 for free um, direct from Verizon. So I'm sure over time the device will fall on price. Um, I actually carry mine with me all the time at work now and actually have like a, a protective carrying pouch, which works out well. I'm hoping they come out with the same type of thing for this device because I do I do like to take this places and I use it more often than I, than I would think to throw in the middle of a room, take a picture. And then if I have to go talk to someone in reality or someone wherever and say, hey, this over here doesn't look right or and I can sp- spin the whole room around i mm-hmm. used to walk in and try to take a panoramic and now i can just take it and have the whole room nice pretty much 360 degree you lose that stitch mark but it's not that bad um the, the other thing they announced and, and they announced the, the the new phone which we we kind of talked about when had bixby and, and a lot of things the, mm-hmm. the the phone's very cool i'm more interested to see it up close and personal um and and interface with bixby before I can actually do to me an intelligent conversation around it. Um, the other thing that caught my attention was the deck stock. Um, so the other link in there, five things to know about Samsung's deck stock. Um, <clears throat> this dock has an HDMI output, two USB inputs, an Ethernet, from what I saw, an Ethernet input. Um, and it allows you to take your device, put it in this dock, and it becomes a full fledged PC. From what I saw in, in video and in pictures, it was kind of reminiscent of kind of Chrome OS type look and feel. Um, they said they have tried to partner where they felt it was necessary to really get a good experience. Um, they, they partnered with Microsoft to make sure their applications work well. Um, this is going to bring a kind of desktop experience to your house um, by just throwing your phone in this dock. Um, I think this is just like when Microsoft came out with this feature. I think this is sooner or later the, the end all be all mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. of computing experience. You know, I understand that there's gamers out there and they update their gaming rig every three months with the newest video card and more RAM and fastest SSD and blah, 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 blah. But for the average user, what are the, what are you handing your mom, right? What are you handing? What's your what's your dad using? What's siblings using? Wouldn't it be amazing if it's all one device? <clears throat> We're already half of them are saying, well, maybe you just need a phone, or you need a phone and you need an iPad. But what if that becomes the same thing? Or even I'm looking at these. So what first strikes me about this picture is I'm like, huh, Office. You know, I that, and they'd work closely and, with Microsoft to make sure the Office, Office experiences, Office apps mm-hmm. are in here, not the just the web experience that you have. And last I knew, between Android and, and iOS, the Office apps are fairly robust. Missy, you have you actually use Office the most here, and have used. I don't know how much you're using it on your phone, but like what the is it are, is the app version pretty comparable? I know you you mostly use the small screen version. Yeah, I'm mostly using the small screen version. Um, to be honest, I haven't been much in it recently because that small screen is kind of a bitch to deal with. Right, right. When you're typing stuff out, and one of the biggest problems that I had with it previously also was uh, it was geared toward mobile, so I would have to save it in my OneDrive, which wasn't a problem. But for me to access something on my desktop, I, I actually have things that I'm currently working on on my desktop so that they're more easily accessible. Um, being able to edit the document was a little weird mm-hmm. when I did it. Now, again, it, it's been some time. And again, it's on the phone, not like the iPad version or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe, maybe on a slightly well, larger platform, it would be easier. So if you technically the iPad 9.7, since it's under 10 inches, which you don't have, your iPad's bigger. Um it should technically be eligible for free office. So if you have a nine, seven ta- iPad, cause it's under the 10 inch mark office mm. is free on those devices to edit mm. and whatnot. So check that out. Um, I'm pretty sure that's still the case. We, we actually have a, a home account with 
five office licenses. Yeah, on and we it. just have we just have the the subscription for per use because <clears throat> I I anything I do is in Docs. But you can you can use that on a computer and a tablet. So right. technically, her license you could put. I on could there. use it on an iPad. I've been yeah. pretty impressed with the the experience. Now, what I did to help bridge the the gap of or OneDrive and storage and that kind of thing is. I made a folder on my desktop and said work in progress and then set that as a OneDrive sync. I added that to the OneDrive synchronization library. So that's always synchronized back and forth. But you do have to add the OneDrive client if you don't already have it on there. Yeah, and I well. I did that and mine for some reason keeps unsyncing. Uh, so when I put it in there, it doesn't sync with what I've got going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, otherwise I was really super happy when I was able to use Microsoft office docs from my phone, because that's what I usually create and edit in. The big, the big part I I felt was nice is was for viewing PowerPoint. I deal a lot in PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. The fonts, the fonts usually stay consistent. Yes. Um, Cause Microsoft brings the fonts over into their apps from the windows operating system and whatnot. That was the big, and a lot of some of the, Graphics layouts and tables and whatnot. If you're not just doing a graphic, if you actually have like an Excel spreadsheet behind it, they stay pretty intact. Yeah, which honestly, that is one of the things that I do appreciate about the Microsoft suite versus using Google Docs. Because Google Sheets, if I do formatting, I'm limited to what formatting will transfer over into certain Mm -hmm. things. And if I take a Microsoft Office document, you know, whether it be a doc or an Excel spreadsheet, if I put it into a Google Drive, it takes out all of my formatting and makes it look weird. So now that we've deep dived into Word, I'm sorry I started sorry. this. Um, <laughs> and actually, I, so I actually logged in with your account to kind of see how this looks. And I'll be maybe we should do a little experiment where we 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 let you roll with this iPad for a, a little bit and and see kind of how replaceable is it from your laptop like a day in a day in the life or something like that with the ipad pro i'd be really curious you about might that. not get the ipad uh, yeah that might, might have to buy another ipad uh so so there's that so i mean it looks really nice just a little bit i've been kind of playing with this here so all right well i want to talk a, oh so just one last thing the, oh, yeah. the one thing that that makes makes me skeptical skeptical and i i hope there's some sales and some some kind of additional promotion around this mm-hmm. is the deck stock comes in at 150 bucks uh, which but but okay how much is that phone it starts at what 850 yeah that's not that's comparable yeah but for, what is it what is the dock also what's in the dock is it does it have a little bit of power to bump that up i don't think like so. kind of like how when you put the nintendo switch into the dock it has a little bit more power to bump up that resolution i no, think it's you, a usb you think, dock you think it's just a usb dock and it just like transfers it to a display port and I haven't seen a picture of the dock in the stuff that you posted in here. Um, what does it look like? What, well, let's, let's get back. Well, we'll, 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 while you're looking at that, let me just throw a shout out to our good friends. Slice on Broadway. I uh, want to give a shout out to them for supporting the show and feeding our guest, Kloon Chilla, here in the studio. He makes sure he at least gets in here every other week so he can get his fix. I think I think him to go into Studio C every other week is kind of a dietary uh, thing as far as he's <laughs> he's concerned. Uh, but thanks to our good friends. I actually saw Rico, the owner, um, while we were picking up today uh, here at Slice on Broadway on Broadway Avenue, or where the trains still roll here in Pittsburgh. Um, in Beachview, and of course, they're down in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. With hey, opening day is coming up. It was t- opening day for Pittsburgh. Is this Friday? I think it's Friday. Go down if you're going down to the game. <clears throat> check out some slice on Broadway. So thank you so much for them um, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. Slice on Broadway.com, PJ's underscore slice on Twitter, and slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. So. Um, did you get that picture? There's or... a link, the PC mag link in the same section of the dock. Do, do, do. It's, it's, I mean, for, for what it is, it's pretty small. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, it seems like it's just some plastic and some ports. Cause don't forget the bottom of the, the device is U, USB-C. Mm-hmm. So they can run display and input output. Yeah, there's not much to that, that kind of stuff. Um, to the dock. So I'm pretty sure it's not providing any additional power. Um, 
it is providing charge capability. Um, but I don't from a power perspective. But again, but it's not like there's a GPU and a, an additional CPU. And it's like USBs, there. and you plug into a monitor, <clears throat> and you have a key, mouse and keyboard to you know. It looks like they're they're Bluetooth in, which makes sense. So I, I think that's cool. I, I think that does kind of open things up a little bit. Um, yeah, that that kind of mobile business, you know. Mm-hmm. You know man, that that really. I I wish. The only thing I would say is, um, and I know this concept has been around too. I kind of wish it would bump up to a laptop. Right, like a, is slide into a laptop. Yeah, just slide into a laptop, and that's it. I Which, agree. and again, there, there's some like maybe a Windows phone or something did that, like for, for Dell, maybe. And yeah, and and Motorola had an Android device that did that yeah, to eight of yeah. or whatever. That makes sense. Like this is very very accessible, and I think I think this could again add that. Eh, this is all I need, kind of experience mm-hmm. like, like others have. So, um, since we're this is kind of off script, but um, since we were talking about the 360, it kind of inspired me. Because and this is again wrestling. Obviously, we do that show on this network too. But I was really kind of uh, looking at and critiquing this uh, kind of 360 experience. Pittsburgh's own Kurt, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle recently, of course, returned to the WWE, and uh, they had a 360 interview with Daniel Bryan and host Renee Young uh, uh, as part of this. And it was kind of interesting. You can tell. I think they they did film this here in um, PPG arena uh so i'm wondering if our, our friends that work at the arena can recognize what room this is in you can see on you hey, here's the thing you can see all the doodads and the wires and everything hanging out and and for the most part i, I like how they try to dress it up but um and it's kind of like a I, I don't know how i feel about this idea where it's 360 and really just one shot on one side is basically there's your people talking right and on the other side and they mentioned this at the beginning it, they put highlights so it just seems like one you're you have to you have to 180 in order to get stuff that they're talking about. And you do hear a little bit of it in the background. Um, <clears throat> and I also critique them a little bit on this because they didn't bother to mic the guests. The, like it, the, you can tell like this, the, it was the mic that was on the camera. Right. But they've done so much editing to this. <laughs> like there were there were like kind of titles um at the beginning that kind of floated and everything like that but but then they didn't have the audio you know it just seemed like a big piece missing for something like this you know so to me i think in this case and this is why i think the the cameras have the capability you can turn on off one of the cameras Mm -hmm. and just do a 180 right i wish they would have pulled in closer to them like you like where you would be sitting at the table. Yeah. So you're kind of looking side to side. So you would just look side to side. And if, and in those cases, when you only use the one, the one side of the camera, mm-hmm. it loops the other side. So if you were to pull a 180, you'd be sitting in the exact same position. Oh, I haven't seen that. I've you seen, I've I mean? seen where it's just the 180 <clears throat> and, and that's it. Like you it's just something, get stopped. yeah, it's the 180. And then what they do is, I think it's actually almost like an animated GIF loop. Mm-hmm. Where it just says, if you go this far this way, flip all the way back around kind of thing. But it's also, I'm always interested in kind of these things. Like, I, I have a problem with this style. Um, Alex Lindsay in the, in the Pixel Cores do something similar to this for their Final Cut user groups now. Mm-hmm. Where it's like four or five people around a table like this that's in front of you. And then they have a monitor also on this side of the table in front of you. There's no, really no reason to turn around behind you. You just see the rest of the studio. Um, and it's right there. And I'm just like, well, everything that's in shot, what am I looking around for? And it seems non-functional to have that monitor displaying final cut tips. You know what I mean? So I would, I would, in my vision of that would be, it's not meant for the browser view. It's meant for you to sit with goggles on as if you were actually participating. But then... I, you know, is the monitor in front of you like video, a like, computer? Uh, I'll see if I can pull it up. But the video, you know, I, I feel like if and do they stream that live though too? It was or? streamed live. So that's they, they so, had one of those ozos and are doing that thing. To so. me, to me, that's more of the. It's great to rewatch it, right? But if you were participating or watching while it was live, again, these these are guys on the bleeding edge. This is mm-hmm. Pixel Cores. This is this is uh, you know they do like they're on the bleeding edge of freaking 
you know, th- this is a sixty thousand dollar camera they're using just because you know it takes forever to 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 process. And actually, I did get a chance to pull it up here. We're gonna give, see if it loads on this old ass computer. Um, so nope, that's missing. There it is. Uh, so here's the idea, and it's not gonna be ter- terribly smooth. Um, or great resolution just because of how big this is. So yeah, you have a monitor in front of you, just a Wacom tablet uh, where they're showing it off and it's like not even like close enough, it feels, right? And they're just at a table and the 360, it just seems so useless because you just see the back of the studio, mm-hmm. right? It, like <clears throat> This isn't content made for 360. To me, this is, again, it's meant for a goggle type experience and it's meant, it's meant for you to be sitting at the table is a good tip though. Every one of them has this light bulb in the middle. So, so everything's kind of evenly lit regardless. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Now I wonder if you had, cause to me when you're wearing, when you're wearing a headset type of thing, mm-hmm. it seems to pull that content forward and give you a different, field of vision your field of vision is not right it's a little tighter than what you're not getting four by three <laughs> right right it's, it, or even that other one when i was looking at on, on on facebook the the wwd wwe one was was like more zoned in right mm-hmm. and it depends on which way your phone is and everything too right so, so i would think i mean to me this that could make sense if you had that headset on versus you're watching it like that yeah, because I mean, I'm looking at the video that you just pulled up, Sorg, and like I can imagine being in the experience having, you know, instead of instead of it being, you know, two to three feet in front of my face on my screen, you see that it. it's more here, so it, it does look kind of like I look down and there's the screen in front of me where it would be. I, I think that that might be more of what we're looking at. The 360 that you showed for the WWE stuff, on the other hand, mm-hmm. I didn't really get that. That just seemed way too far away for. It's too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's interesting. And again, I, I think we should consider these as all experiments for all, all parties involved. Right. No matter how big or small they might be. Um, so, and, and, you know, obviously they're, they're, they're working. Right. I mean, these are the things um, I don't know. They had 1600 views on this, but, you know, it's a very tight thing. And, you know, something like the WWE, I'm sure has thousands because it's just it just because of the, the people involved, to be quite honest. So, so it, it sounds like you've gotten pretty worked up over this. So I'm going to go ahead and move us along to the next thing because you, you could really use a vacation. Oh, I know you've been working. <laughs> Can pretty, I? <laughs> you've been working pretty hard. Okay. So Brandon actually shared an awesome thing of the week this week. And his awesome thing of the week is everybody talks about these these fun cruises. Well, there's a video gaming cruise that's coming up and it's uh, Gamer Gauntlet 2017. And... Curtis Smith and his team at Gamer Tech Events are looking to change the general, you know, just whatever you, you see, like, you know, places like Vegas or, you know, different things like that that they do for PAX East and, and all those different types of events. They're going to be doing it as a cruise. And it's set to p- take place this October. It will head to the Bahamas on the Royal Caribbean's Majesty of the Seas. And it has room for 2,500 avid gamers and a variety of esports superstars and gaming celebrities. Oh my! So it's going to be kind of like an all-inclusive package on a boat mm. for gamers. Could you imagine the con funk on a boat? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a lot. Well, of they better. have full immersion rooms. Yeah. So yeah. They... So 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 on top of you feeling seasick from having the VR in on, you also add the motion of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the motion of the ocean. Um, wow, this is great. Well, they've attracted the attention of other parties as well. So they've got HTC Vive, Red Bull, Meta Threads, and others. You know, Lucid Sound, HTC Esports, Coder Camps, Vertigear, and Games. So I mean, they've got a lot of interest in this. It's nice because it's it's kind of one of those fun little Florida in the Bahamas. Oh man, I want to go. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so kickstarter for next year um so no that's awesome so if people want to find out more information well we'll have that linked over um, linked over but yeah but you game, gamer gauntlet 2017 looks like that's yeah. what you would search for for something like that so yeah. that's cool 
That's cool. Um, all right. <laughs> we got, yeah, we got a few, uh, kind of fan submitted ones. Man, Brandon, Brandon's always putting a lot in here. Doug, let's, uh, uh that, of course, that was by Brandon, the, the gamer cruise. Um, Doug shared, this is something for the geeky website builders out there. Uh, but the, uh, Google Analogs blog shared that the Analyx 360 suite, um, the, or at least the, the part of the Google optimized part of it is now free for everyone. So if you want to see how your site checks out, uh, you can uh, go to this, uh, uh, type in your URL, and it'll it'll do an analysis on it. Basically, you know, what are the... And I think you get a little bit of this on, you know, if you go to Webmaster Tools and you can see, like, I'll, you know, here's some stuff on, on you know, how this shows up and everything. Um, and I'm trying to see if we can roll in here. I acknowledge, yes. Let's do something nice and easy like awesomecast.net or .com, actually. Um, I can create an experiment. Well, this is actually a little more complicated than I expected. Um, but again, you can kind of analyze your tools and, and everything in here. Um, so, wow. Yeah, this, this gets a little deeper. Here's what, here's what we're going to do with this, Sorg. Mm. As the producer for the show, this is how I'm going to this is how I'm going to make this work. You're going to play with this after the fact mm -hmm. and you're going to put up a, a separate video kind of like we do for our awesome tips and all that fun jazz. Am I? Yes, you are. <laughs> so those of you listening, keep an eye out. We'll have the video going a, a little bit later as Sword kind of plays with us and, and checks it out for us. All right. Well, I'm typing in now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> did, did you just sort of... as, I, as I'm typing in now. Nice. Um, but no, go, go check it out. Uh, just look up optimize.google.com and free for everybody. Uh, let's see. Chris Whitlatch... Have you looked into this one, the the immersive esports theater that he shared? Uh, a little bit, primarily because some of the other stuff that we've been talking about with him, mm -hmm. it was just kind of one of those, hey, this is kind of cool sort of things. So essentially, they're going to be doing, everybody knows about these esports facilities popping up on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, you, you get this immersive experience with everything. So the immersive esports theater has adjacent Chinese six theater complex. And they're going to be doing uh, as part of CinemaCon, opening in late summer of uh, this year, they're going to be doing a bunch of different things. So they're looking at MX 4 D esports theater, immersive equipment and discussing with uh, sponsors to kind of just bring everything together um, with it. It's going to feature air and water blasts, leg, and neck ticklers, fog, seat rumblers, and more. So you, you get that complete, like, you're there 3D experience with the, the motion and different things. So, like, there's a blast of air coming from something, and you're going to feel it on your leg, or you're going to feel it on the back of your neck, or, you know, wherever they set them in. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting concept with it. Uh, we're, we're, we've been talking about the, the 3D video. This takes kind of that sort of stuff to even a different level with that regard so yeah awesome awesome so uh before we get to more techie things we have to we share some geekiness first i know missy you're excited about this invader zim is coming back <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's coming back as a movie uh on yes. nickelodeon yes so yes um so I saw this this nice image of Invader Zim pop up in my Facebook feed, and I was like, ooh, what is this? And yes, Invader Zim is returning in the best way possible. So it's been 16 years since the Invader Zim series, which has become a cult classic. And they're going to be bringing it back for, for a run kind of truncated for those of us who, who appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a 90-minute film series, or film, I'm not sorry, not a series, but film, with the original cast members and there's not a whole lot going on about the plot yet. So we, we really don't know what's going on, but we do know that Zim has come up with a new and potentially earth destroying plan that may finally give Zim his due from the, from his alien overlords. Um, so we have a fun little teaser that uh, we're going to go ahead and put out on the Facebook feed for everybody to check out. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this. And on top of that, apparently on um, April fools with all the things going on, Adult Swim dropped a new Rick and Morty episode, um, like for real on on was it on stream or on 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 the channel? I think maybe 
Um, but either way, the, the coolest thing from it, now that, that's cool as to begin with, but uh, there was a thing about how uh, Rick would go back and get the Szechuan she- Szechuan sauce from uh, oh, back yeah. when they did the Mulan, Disney's Mulan promotion. And and it was a big thing. It got around the internet afterwards. And uh, apparently from that, McDonald's is actually considering bringing back Szechuan <laughs> sauce. So... <laughs> Way to go if Dan Harmon really loves Szechuan sauce. Um, that's one way to bring it back. So Rick and Morty. If you haven't checked it out, um, uh, the first two seasons of Rick and Morty are on Hulu. So if you have a subscription to that or trial or whatever, you can digest it pretty quick. Because I think it might be maybe 20 episodes total. Um, definitely worth It's a lot, a lot, a lot of geeky and dirty fun. Uh, so please go check that out. Chilla, what's going on? Otherwise, techie, that's that's catching your attention. So if you grab and let me go back to the dock. If you scroll all the way to the bottom and grab <clears throat> um, the first one. So let me talk about this, and then I want to talk about a tip before we before we leave today. So one of the things I found interesting last week, Vizio is launching a new D series of TV for people on a budget. Okay. Um, the interesting thing about this lineup is they're all 4K. These 4K TVs start at a little over 400 bucks. So for 420 bucks, you can get a 43 inch 4K TV. And I actually saw, I'm guessing they also released some additional ones because I saw at Best Buy, there was a 30, I think it was a 38 or 43 inch 4K TV from Vizio. It was sub 400. I think it was like 379. So I don't know if it was a prior model marked down, but still from, a, I, I know you're not getting ultra high def. You're not, or you're getting, you're getting ultra high def. You're not getting HDR and you're not getting some of the other bells and whistles, but from just an entry level 4k TV, it's amazing. 4k Netflix, whatever. Cause don't forget yeah. these all have, they're all smart TVs out of the box. So I think they come with like built-in Roku. Or, or um, even just if you're in the market for a TV because you need a TV yeah. or a replacement or a new room or something like that, why not future... future if, if you're a person that like, your my TV will go until it dies mm-hmm. and I'm hoping that's five years. It's a good idea to grab a 4K TV if it's not going to break your bank. Right. And, and at these and, price points, I think it's definitely accessible to, to people that are that are going into the 43 inch TV market mm-hmm. these are not breaking the bank as, as, as far as what they are um, I mean it's not it's not the I mean they have a hundred and thirty nine dollar 24 inch 200 dollar 32 inch um, when you look at the prices of all of the other type of flat screen TVs that are out there to me this is is well below the price points of a lot of other manufacturers and I'm hoping this also drives down the cost of the higher end manufacturers um, just to give people a, a additional buying power when it comes to, to the, the more name brand per se devices. But actually I'm, I'm looking for, from that price point. That's what I would have paid for um, a smaller 4k TV to put upstairs in our, in, in our bedroom or office. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I can go bigger with the high res. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this may be kind of our upstairs type TV for the, for that point. Yeah. Nice, nice secondary, nice secondary low end 4k TV. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. Um, real quick. Uh, I think it's a uh, worth mentioning. Uh, SpaceX relaunched its Falcon nine rocket as the first time ever a rocket has been reused. Like historically, I believe. Right. Um, that's, that's really big for one driving down the cost on making, making like regular, uh, space travel and, and, you know, kind of a thing. Um, we have, oh, Google maps who surprised me in the middle of a business meeting on, on Friday, when I legitimately opening Google maps on my iPhone to go figure out geographically where we were, because there's some stuff we were talking about business wise and location wise and stuff. And then I saw a Miss Pac-Man button and the meeting stopped. (laughs) 
Um, so I love when they, they do the, the Google Maps Pac-Man thing. I love that Miss Pac-Man was a thing rolling there. Um, otherwise, mostly tried so much to ignore April Fool's because um, it happens every year. It's like, oh, I heard this thing happened. And they're like, no, that was an April Fool's joke. It was the day after. And I'm like, son of a bitch. That one seemed plausible <laughs> and was not. I read this morning and I hate this. Um, but yeah, so um Man, they put a lot of time into some of those videos, and I don't even know if I want to bother. Like, I know Katie was 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 um was sharing the pet Lexa, yes, for for the Amazon Lexa one, which I keep rereading as pet pet Lexia, okay, like dyslexia. So it, that was awkward. I should have watched the video, so I stopped doing that. But um, yeah, yeah, um. So go check these out. Awesome cast on Facebook group uh, where you have a lot of discussions around this and you could share your stories for potentially being a part of the show. Missy, what's going on around the meat space these days? Meat space is in like bacon or meat space is in meat as in meat meat. Oh, so the things that we can actually do IRL with stuff. I was thinking like bacon. Ooh, I like bacon. Bacon might be involved in some of these. Bacon may be involved. Well, for those who are interested, uh, I know we talked about this the last couple of weeks. The Papa 20 World Championships is tomorrow uh, with the Replay FX and Papa Group. Uh, so if you are interested in pinball and old school gaming, you might want to check some of that stuff out. There is a tech happy hour coming up with the. Uh, pittsburgh tech meetup that's at mario's east side saloon and that's also uh tomorrow the seventh the shop and boxy are are putting together a thinking outside the boxy event so uh that's that's going to be kind of an interesting developer type of thing going on over there with those guys i think uh, boxy the ones did the hacks box i think i think so yeah Yeah, we talked to them on awesome chat i think yeah we did um so so they've got that event coming up CMU Summit 2017 is coming up on the 15th, and that's over at uh, at CMU, where a lot of the tech tech mind individuals are coming out of CMU these days. As you do. Yes, exactly. Uh, the Pittsburgh Technology Leaders Group Building Trust with Your Team event uh, with the Pittsburgh Tech Council is coming up on the 18th. There is a seminar with Erasmus Center for Future Energy Business Director Wolf Ketter, also on the 18th. That's also at CMU. The 2017 STEM Summit is coming up on the 19th, and that again is with the Pittsburgh Tech Council. The Risky Business Small Business Legal Tips Seminar with the Pittsburgh Tech Council is the 19th as well. There's a lot going on the 19th, it looks like. Um, Other than that, we're we're getting into some later stuff into the month. Uh, Explore the floor at Gardner Denver Nash. That's in Charleroi. Um, So they've got actually a interesting event going on with the Pittsburgh Tech Council down in Charleroi, of all places here in Pittsburgh. So even if you can't get into the city for something, if you're south of the city and Charleroi is is a doable space, check that out. And for reasons, we may be keeping an eye on on things happening like outside the city like that, because there's been, you know, as we've talked with our friends in Hermitage and some other friends uh, south of town here, um, there's it's really cool to see like you don't have to be in the city to do some cool tech and startup and there were just opportunities coming up there. Um, Remind remind everybody again, uh, if you have a an event that you'd like to have us listed, uh, on our event thing, just go ahead and email us at events at sorgatronmedia.com and we'll get your event added to our to our rundown. And keep an ear out. We'll probably have an announcement soon, but we will have um, uh, the Sorgatron Media Coffee will probably be the second to last weekend in, in the month here. I think that's around the 21st-ish. Um, that's probably not even close now I think about it. Uh, but anyways, uh, look out for that and you guys, you guys can hang out with us and uh, talk tech and podcasting as well. Yeah, actually around the 22nd, I think we're looking at. So we'll have announcements soon. And also in coming weeks, we have scheduled our good friends Brian Crawford from River's Edge. And will be uh, uh, joining us for the awesome cast, as well as Ryan Haggerty of Blood on the Leaves. We talked with uh, them a while ago when they were releasing the movie. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on with awesome cast right now. So, um, but check out everything out. Keep any updates on the awesome cast, Twitter, Facebook, and awesomecast.com. I got to get used to that after all these years, right? Uh, Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitter. It's chillatech.net. 
John's chill on the Facebook, chill a photo on the DeviantArt. Talk gadgets with him. Talk mobility. Mobility. Mo- mobility things. Let's get, let's get mobile with your decks and your big monitor. Let's Everyone get dragging it mobile. Around. Yeah, dragging you. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's kind of like the the person that brought the iMac to. No, wasn't there a picture of like somebody with like a, a G4 tower and a monitor at a at a Starbucks or something? Yeah, and I actually saw someone had one of those Dell All in Ones, like a big twenty, <laughs> like twenty one inch Dell All in One at the Starbucks at a Starbucks I was at. I was like. Really? You're... And she actually had like a big canvas bag. She just She's like, carried I just it carry around. This around. And... Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's basically a laptop, but just not form factor. Yeah. The same. That's. I... You get a full size keyboard. But you get a full size keyboard. That's the big thing. <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to be the thing that, that kills Missy on using this iPad is the is the keyboard size. But I also don't have the regular size keyboard for the iPad. So yeah, my my whole thing, and this when I bought my laptop, this was the big thing about my laptop was. I needed to have my keyboard that I could use, but even more importantly, I needed to have my numbs pad. Mm-hmm. Do you have any Bluetooth keyboards laying around? No, no, no. Like this is it. Seriously. You notice I'm using the iPad three <clears throat> keyboard with the iPad pro. So. I'll bring you, I'll bring you a Bluetooth keyboard next week. <laughs> oh, <it's>, of course. <laughs> Chilla um, is our tech hookup. Of course. He's like, yeah, I got one. I got one. I can't let you, I can't let you suffer without a Bluetooth keyboard. I got one. No, for no, you. his, his actual thing is, you do a tech podcast. You have to at least <laughs> look professional in some capacity, sort of. Blue. I, I don't have one with a keypad though, so I wonder if they make a Bluetooth keypad. Mm. Keyboard. With... He's he's researching this. <laughs> well, that's so, for later. Where, 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 can we, where can we find Chilla? Did we get that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got, got that. that we got that. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Um, MikeSorg.com, uh, SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of fun stuff going on, including. Bold Nights Out from BoldPGH.com is now part of the network. Yes. We can announce. You yes. can go check it out. Please Congratulations please look Bold up Pittsburgh. Bold Nights Out on your, especially your iTunes or wherever you subscribe to your podcast. Please subscribe. You know, check out the show. Help them out in the first few weeks as we are, we're putting them on a new server and everything. So they are extending out and, and, you know, let's get that bumped up and get people into the podcast. Um, and so please subscribe, leave a comment, um, uh, at least rate it, you know, and anything to help them out. Cause that does help bump them up in the ratings, you know? And for those who are interested in what bold nights out is, uh, mm-hmm. for bold Pittsburgh is a Pittsburgh easy that we do online and the bold nights out takes a specific look at what's to do here in the city for, for the night scene. Uh, they talk mm-hmm. with about some different restaurants, bars, um, events, um, specific drinks like so they're they're hitting up some breweries and stuff and they've been a part of the river's edge uh network for a good while so Mm -hmm. they've been they've been out for a bit so go check them out my friend friend amanda narcissi that was on this show actually about a month ago so yeah uh amanda with podcast (laughs) thank you everybody for joining us thank you to our awesome chat room have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.